Well, it's been a long time since I've been here last, but I am back. I have not been sitting around doing nothing. I've actually been doing lots of stuff and I want to give you a bit of an update of where I'm at and what's going to carry on to, into the new year. Um, so what, what has happened over the last maybe 15, 16 weeks, uh, I've been running a podcast called Don't Be a Doorstop. Now, Don't Be a Doorstop is called Don't Be a Doorstop. Because um, in life, you can be a doorstop, as in a hammer could make for a good doorstop. Um, but it's not the the designed thing for a doorstop. A hammer is meant to be hammering nails. So my brother and I, or Tom also works with me as well, so call it you, good brother. Um, both of us started a podcast together talking about purpose uh, and some of the things that we're just like coming across um, in regards to mindset and stuff. So we've started that, um, I think, 15, 16 weeks ago now, which has been great. Uh, the two reasons why we started that is one, I was doing interviews, individual interviews, but I found just logistically arranging them quite difficult to do amongst all the other stuff. Um, so in switching it to doing it with someone I'm comfortable with and can get hold of reasonably easy, and we're only doing a max kind of like 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes uh, recording uh, and trying to bash it out rather than think about, you know, planning it and getting it right, be more spontaneous and focus on the output and just getting it done. So that's been a really successful uh, thing that we started. So you can jump over to Don't Be A Doorstop. We're on, um, we're on Spotify, we're on YouTube and have a listen to those and those will be carrying on into this year. And then um, what else has happened is, is client work has carried on going. And what I've started to think about is um, the word ecosystem. So I've always wanted to build an ecosystem of like three pillars of services, products, and IP, which is the final pillar, uh, intellectual property. And at the back of last year, I was able to do some of that. So I've come up with three characters, um, three cartoon characters that I'm kind of like drawing and putting together little stories. And I've come up with six stories so far as in conceptually, and I've completed one and I've drawn out the second one. So I need to just produce that one properly digitally. And what this is, uh, is called is uh, life's journeys. And what I want it to be is just kids books for, um, for, well, to be honest, they don't have to be kids books, but books that will teach uh, kids or young people or even adults uh, some of the things that I'm learning. So again, first episode, what I thought was rather than wait for this idyllic situation where I'm able to find a, an illustrator or be able to illustrate it to my, uh, myself to a particular standard, I thought I'd start with just black and white drawings um, and use kind of my basic skill set of illustration. Um, what I've realized I'm a little bit better than I give myself credit for. So I've improved a, a little bit on that. So I just did some real simple um, kind of like black and white drawings for these characters and uh, produced it using Amazon's uh, Kindle and book publishing platform. So I'm not um, engaged with any external publisher, just using all of them. And then Yesterday, I completed the physical book. Uh, so there's now an English version of the first book, um, an English Kindle, a Welsh Kindle, because I'm wanting to translate it all into Welsh to hopefully build up to selling it as a TV series um, to S4C, which is the Welsh channel. Um, building that into um, Kindle, then I've been working on the English uh, softcover book. I've just finished that. One of the hurdles was my book was too short, <laughs> so I had to include some extra pages. And what I thought, the first story is about um, trying new things. And it's not necessarily about trying uh, new things and always liking it. It might be that you dislike something, but it's important to try new things and find new things that you're good at and enjoy at the same time. Uh, so at the end of the book, I decided to extend it by saying, now you have a go, like, tell me things that you would like to try. So you could draw a picture, you can write a story, and you can say whether or not you tried it. So like a tick box or a checklist, and whether or not you enjoyed it. Uh, and those, that basically gets it then to 24 pages. So you'll see that. I'm waiting for a proof to arrive. So you'll see that when that happens. Um, and then I'll convert all of that into Welsh, um, which I'm really, really looking forward to. So um, that's been... Services have been busy, uh, as always, doing client work. My IP pillar has been built. And then product, kind of don't be a doorstop, is kind of a product because we'll probably be doing, you know, T-shirts and mugs and that kind of stuff off the back of that and sponsorships. 
And then uh, the kind of the one that I jumped over was products. So I've been building a product called Insider with my wife, Kemma. She's a music artist and music artists over COVID got screwed over because gigging and all that um, kind of income from gigging disappeared overnight. And streaming has always been there as a bit of a, a baseline, but it's a, a weak baseline in the sense of uh, streaming doesn't pay you much at all. So we've decided to build a platform which allows independent music artists to create um, independent um, kind of like VIP groups, as it were, which will be a subscription group. So they will get subscription income. And for that, the fan or the insider, as we're phrasing it, the insider would get access to unreleased music as well as a direct comms between uh, the artist and them, as well as other insiders for that one artist. So, so far we've got like 44 artists sign up, which is great. And then this year we want to really, really push it and hopefully go for uh, some funding mechanisms as well to, to basically grow that because ultimately I've already built it um, a, a, a version of it that, that holds together quite well. It's now a case of getting more people using it and also increasing the mechanism in, in which we encourage more artists to get fans or insiders on board on that one. So those are some of the kind of like top liners. But what I wanted to kind of share with you is my mega plan or my ecosystem plan. And what I've done last night, I couldn't sleep, Well, I slept and then I woke up and I was like, I'll go and draw. I feel like in this year, I'm going to draw a little bit more and and kind of like sketch out stuff more. So I bought a massive roll of paper from my kids and pens and stuff. And I've been doing that and I've been really enjoying it because I've been watching a Netflix. On Netflix, there's a series called Abstract, which is all about um, design and its different forms, whether or not it's architecture or fashion or typography. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, interviews, one of the individuals, one of the artists was like, yeah, drawing or sketching is kind of like an extension of your mind. Um, and I quite like that idea of, yeah, whether or not there's some new things that can be discovered through iterating on paper rather than digitally. Of course, I've always done that, um, but I'm doing it with more intention, uh, now as well. So what I've done in, um, while it was dark last night in red pen, which I've now realized it's red pen because last night I couldn't see all it was was black and white because I didn't bother turning any lights on because I didn't want my eyes, my retinas to burn. I've drawn out, um, some of the kind of the pillars of what I'm wanting to build as the ecosystem and then some of the funnel mechanisms. And I thought it might be interesting just to share like a behind the scenes kind of thing that I'm thinking about for 2023 and how that then uh, materializes into, you know, the next steps for me. So obviously I spoke about services, which is basically client work. And um, what I'm wanting to do there is build a little bit more my socials for Ryland Consulting. So Last year, redesigned my website, which I'm super happy about. I've converted it to Welsh as well, but I've not finished translating. So I need to finish translating for that. And the two real mechanisms for, um, for getting more work are just cold emails. And what I'd like to try more is to see if I can get some government contracts. So I've already signed up to be a government supplier, which I've successfully become a government supplier on the list. I need to sign some final, final paperwork to get me onto the... Um, to, to that kind of list. And hopefully that will mean that there's some credibility and also some opportunities from there. And the second thing is interviews. So I was trying, I did interview like hundreds of people last year to see if I could get interviews, but the first email doesn't matter. It's about the second, third, fourth, fifth email. And it's all about the follow-up. So I think I need help getting um, those follow-ups together to find people that are in business that are doing successful in whatever business that is. It doesn't necessarily just have to be digital. And I want to talk about origin stories and business principles, the things that make them um, good at business, the things that they find hard at business. Um, so I did a couple of those um, last year, but I, I really enjoyed them because that's kind of like an anti-sales technique. So I want to do more of those. And I know that that really should sit on the business side of things. So that's basically like the thing that I'm struggling with is follow follow-ups to get those interviews booked in. And then I should just re um reconfigure calendly um so then the arranging of those interviews is all taken care of so that's like the business side i think those are the things i want to grow in, in that perspective another thing um on top of the cold emailing i did a bunch of cold emails to dev agencies so we provide we do dev stuff as well uh, development stuff as well as design stuff and it might be that you have a, de a development agency but you don't have in-house design so that's another outlet of, um, or like a strategy that's worked quite well in the, 
in the past um, kind of pitching product design services or, or UX services. So I think that'll be another thing. And the reason why I'm looking off to my side is because I have it all drawn out. And then uh, the products themselves, Insider is going to be a real focus. So I want to get some funding or, or some grant money. Um, and the Welsh government seems to be interested in potentially um, giving us some grant money, especially if we can guide it towards um, assisting Welsh artists, which it naturally will, because it will assist any artist wherever you are. And um, yeah, what I'm really enjoying is the Don't, Don't Be a Doorstop podcast, which is great. I've also come up with a um, newsletter. So the podcast is great just to get out um, like personality and character and also the things that we're thinking about. So it shows a bit of um, wisdom or intelligence, hopefully. And the second part that I want to do is a newsletter to kind of start building up an audience of individuals that are along the lines of wanting to challenge themselves, wanting to grow one in, in mindset and change their circumstances, one with um, growing money, and the second is uh, like cutting money or, or saving money. So I was thinking of releasing this year a, an email a newsletter called The Bottom Line, and it gives you just two things a week. So it'd be one idea or one tip on how to grow your money, and the second idea would be how to um, cut or save money. And that would be something that could be off the back of the podcast, um, could be uh, referring people from the podcast to the newsletter. So we can start drumming up this kind of group of individuals that are wanting to um, to kind of be inspired to to grow um, their, their income and save um, as well and invest. So that's one thing I'm looking forward to. Second thing is like shop stuff. I've obviously designed a bunch of like hats and, and things before, but I've never like publicly shared that stuff. Don't be a doorstop is the first time I've ever bought mugs. Um, so that's been cool. I basically would like to do that a little bit more like merch because that's another mechanism to, to grow money. And then um, that's the product side. And then the, the obviously the IP side, the intellectual property life journey. I want to basically finish off the six stories that I have. So um, I want to do them both in Kindle version and in soft version and soft cover version. What I want to do is basically purchase them to give them one to my two nephews and maybe to some other um, kind of friends that have kids to get some feedback on the books because I can always do um, versions of the books uh, so I, as I can tweak them and, and fix them up. So that's that one. And I think the top and uh, the top and bottom of those two things. So that's the kind of the, the activities. And then what I'm wanting to do is do much more social video. So one, I'm restarting this podcast and this video to kind of basically be behind the scenes. So this is like my brand behind the scenes, maybe a little bit more um, kind of planning and trying to perfect my solo piece to camera because I've not done piece to camera stuff for a long, long time. I prefer doing conversations. Uh, so I want to perfect this. And I think for me, um, yeah, it's going to be the plan, the progress and some of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, so that's that side. Socials will be um, editing most of the podcast stuff and any interviews that I get done. Um, so mainly splicing videos for YouTube, for stories, for YouTube shorts, and then hopefully for LinkedIn and Twitter. So I'd like to get that done as like a bit of a machine and that happens. So it's all coming from this like centralized place. And then on top of all that, there's the charity side. So you may have seen before that I've mentioned about Nottingham Trent. And what I've done is I've, I think it might be five, six years now. I've been um, doing the Ryland Consulting Prize, which was a thousand pounds. Now it's gone up to 2000 pounds for initially three students. And now it's six students uh, that have completed computer science uh, first year. Uh, there's different, the reason why six students is because there's different clusters. Um, there was three before and now six. So it's rewarding um, those that have best progressed in the year or have done well in the year. Um, and that's been a really good introduction to one, finding um, a place for me to just share information and share the stuff that I wanted to hear at university. And two, just connecting to individuals to, to find some of the narratives and some of the pressures that they're experiencing at their, in their journey of university. Because I experienced pressures of, you know, trying to find a job. Now they're feeling exactly the same pressures, um, but even probably more so with the added pressure of social media. So comparison is much, much easier to do um, with comparison of somebody else's success versus your success and so forth. So it's been really interesting kind of getting to, to grips with some of the 
um, students and what they're going through. What I'd like to do is because I've done it consecutive years now, I'm building kind of a bit of a group um, of individuals that have been on the, uh, ha had the award. What I'd like to do is convert that into a bit of a um, alumni, rather than, cons rather than consulting prize, alumni, whether or not we interview those individuals so they can be showcased on my platform, I think that would be one uh, good way. And the second thing is whether or not I build a Slack group or a Discord group with them in it so I can assist them and help them because they could potentially be employees or freelancers for me. So that would be beneficial to them and beneficial to me. So it's, um, yeah, helping both ways. So that's one thing that I want to, to do. Then going forward on the charity stuff, the second thing is uh, I'm in talks with my headmaster. So the craving, uh, the Nottingham Trent thing was great. But what I want to do is move that down because if you've got into university, you've done pretty well to, to do that initially. What happens if you didn't make it into university or um, wanted help into getting to college, but didn't get that help. So I'm in talks with my headmaster um, or the headmaster of Craith in my secondary school. And I'm just working out the criteria in which we will award, um, I think three students with eight one hour tuition uh, sessions. Um, the detail of it is still being worked out. What I'd like to do is for those kids that can't afford it, but that would really uh, need or really be helped by extra tuition, that they, it would be funded by us. And I'm wondering whether or not initially I would do it in Welsh. Um, I, I probably have to do it in Welsh because it's a Welsh school. So in Welsh, in maths and in English. So those are the three that I'm thinking, because again, those are the baselines. If you do want to go into university, um, English and maths is um, a, a baseline. Well, English is a baseline for that one. So I'm currently working on that. And then more recently, the the whole grand scheme of this thing is I do business because business is a is a great tool for uh, and a great a tool for impact and that impact being um, helping people through educational mechanisms. So that's why I give away loads of information and do these podcasts to share and inspire people because that's what I love doing inspiring people and helping people or mentoring. And um, yeah, the Craven thing is a is a good thing. That's like a bolt on and an improvement to my education impact. And what I really want to do is build a school or some sort of university or something or an academy. Now, I've been thinking that the goal of building an academy is so far away that one, I can't think of what that may be uh, because there's obviously I assume that I would need, you know, millions to actually start and continue to run because I don't want this to be just a one off thing. Um, I want it to be something that's substantial that exists. Then I've been thinking, well, that's a long way away. I will just have to find people in the meantime before that can happen. And my thinking has changed a little bit to be, why do I have to wait for the people to turn up or wait for investors or, or not investors, sorry, wait for um, kind of investors, but people putting in money to be able to build this school. Why don't I iterate like what the school could be and build it up to something like that? So I've been thinking that I should run a workshop day where I'll take a, the concept of a design sprint where you come up with a problem or you, or you find a problem, you then draw up some solutions, you choose one solution or maybe two solutions, and then you design it and then you can test that prototype. And what I'd like to do is do it where um, it's a day or an afternoon where a group of kids are, are split up into teams and they problem solve. And it might be that they come up with their own problems in the sense of they share what problems they're experiencing they vote on which problem they want to solve and then they come up with something to solve it. And then they would pitch it at the end and the people that pitch at the end, um, the winners would get a certificate or maybe uh, all of them would get a certificate, but the winners would get a, a special prize of, of some sorts in addition to the certificate of completing the, the day. And that's what I want to um, kind of do in the summer. Uh, so now we're into 2023, I think summer 2023, it'd be great to have a day where, um, we can kind of onboard a bunch of kids to do this like workshop, entrepreneurship workshop. I think that'd be really, really cool to do. So that would be my first iteration of a school because I've been looking at um, Elon Musk's school. He built a school internally so his staff members didn't have less, uh, had less pressure of um, dropping off their uh, kids and going to pick up their kids. Um, why not have the school 
on site so they could just drive there, drop off the kids there in the situation um, in, in place. And the two things that jumped out at that is the mechanism of the school is one, they've developed now that school to be an online course because they, um, he um, employed some kind of like specialist from the school side to kind of manage that. One, um, it's online now, so more people can access it. And their mantra or their approach was taking problems or real life solutions and solving them within teams. So I want to kind of do something similar. So it's broadly speaking, the concept of a design sprint. Um, so I'd like to take that concept and apply that with, uh, and it being in North Wales, because that's how I, what I have an, an affinity to. And then the second part on that is I was thinking, well, Craven is good because again, I have history with the school and it could be a good in slot for people that study business whether or not they would want to do a uh, a business pitch of some sorts or an after school business club or something like that where they'd have a dragon's den style thing where they'd pitch it to me and tom and we would give feedback on it again it's trying to give some real life experience or some real life type of pressures and challenges and people asking you questions at different stages so that's another thing that's kind of come to mind that maybe maybe rather than having a day uh, it would be the first iteration being a evening or a couple of weekends or a couple of evenings after school for Craven. And that could be something done um, either in summer or before they break up or something like that. Because all the ecosystem, all the uh, the setup is, is broadly there. There are students that are already doing business. Um, so I think the only difficulties with that is obviously I'd have to be CRB checked because I think the kids that are doing business are probably only GCSC business because I'm not sure if they do A level business. Um, but I've I've had um, CLB checks done before, so that's all fine. So I think that is that's the only hurdle, and obviously the timing of it all. Um, so that's kind of like the charity stuff building out, and it then means that there's less pressure for me to find someone with five million pounds to invest into this academy, and it gives them. It gives the investors something to to see it in play. So the case study could be, hey, I did this um, either a business meetup or a workshop thing with secondary school kids or with primary school kids, and it went like this. And we've been doing it for the last three years and blah, blah, blah. So it gives a better, it's a bit more meat on the bone for that kind of thing. So I think that is the funnel. So recapping, I've got services, I've got products, and I've got, IP out of all the creation of that becomes socials to just feed into the awareness of all those pillars and kind of the cross purchasing of stuff. And off the back of that, the success of all those products and services and IP uh, goes into the charity stuff. So then I can do charity work um, within my own um, Ryland consulting award or Ryland Academy, which is what I'm thinking of labeling this like workshop stuff. Um, and that's it. So yeah, what I want to do off the back of that is Riverside FM is what I'm recording stuff on now for Don't Be A Doorstop. And what I want to do is, um, sorry, it's tape hanging. What I'm wanting to do is utilize that as my go-to for all my recorded content. Off the back of that, I'm using something called Capwing or Capwing, which is an online tool to edit all these videos. So one, I can edit them in um, Riverside, but two, I want to sometimes style them a little bit differently and, um, and do a little bit more of a pizzazz or, or captions or whatever. So I'm going to carry on using Capwing or Capwing for that K-A-P-W-I-N-G. Then that goes into all the social posts and all the podcasts, um, Spotify, YouTube, all the rest of it. Then flowing from that, I've got um, the newsletter and off the back of the newsletter, having referrals. So when the bottom line newsletter now for the back of the bottom line newsletter it will be referrals based on let's say that um we recommend a way to save money is by switching your gas and electricity you know the age-old one it might be that there could be some referral link where we're using a um compare the market for example and it would give us you know one percent or five percent or ten pounds or something or if there's any products that we're suggesting like Maybe that you want to create a to do list, and Airtable is a great tool for that. Um, so, Airtable, here's the sign up referral link for Airtable, and then we get like $10 off our monthly subscription. So, that's one way to do it. And then, um, yeah, basically, that then feeds into all the 
the signups, the the leverage, the impact, the sales, the clients, uh, the commissions, and then it feeds into the impact part, which is the 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 charity or the charitable stuff that I want to do. And the reason why I keep on saying charity, but it's not it's not going to be a charity right now because it's just extra paperwork and um, that I don't want and don't need right now Um, because it just gets in the way of being able to do these charitable things. And I thought what I'd like to do is um, kind of the outworking of all that drawing up last night. One was this exact episode and I'd verbalize it and share it all. And then two, what I want to do is um, do more of the... um, company stuff of interviews so if you run a company and you're watching this and you'd like to be interviewed then i'd love to i'd love to hear from you so message me or put a comment in the in wherever you're listening this to or wherever you're listening to this or tweet me at real dan ryland spell r-e-a-l and then the doorstop and the bottom line is stuff that we're going to carry on doing or oh, sorry the doorstop is going to be carrying on And the bottom line is going to be starting. So the doorstop, what's great about that is we're coming into January and we've labeled January, January, Jingle January, where we've got a competition to make a jingle. So if you've got musical skills, head on over to Don't Be A Doorstop. And um, we need to create a form so people can actually submit jingles because we've forgotten to. But in some ways, someone will be like, hey, where do I submit it? And then we'll know we can create a form. So maybe it's better to do that way. And then the bottom line, um, I have no subscribers today um but i'd like to start advertising that so we can start building up some subscribers and obviously it will probably change um the the method of it but what i want it to be is very to the point and it might be that ideas don't uh, don't apply to you so for example if you are somebody um that is running a business then you know step one if you are employed and you're not working in bands as in salary bands one way is let's see if you can negotiate a salary increase now if you're running a business it doesn't quite play out so there'll be some customization and stuff that we'll have to build in to make it more appropriate but i'm hoping that it'll be good enough just to be like cool that's for me that's not for me move on delete you know move on so i think i'm i'm really looking forward to that so yes, this is a restart of um, the Dan Ryland audio experience. I should probably change that name and do it, do something else. But um, or the Dan Ryland experience, yeah, maybe maybe it'll stay like that for now. You might see that the brand changes and shifts over the over the next few weeks, months, because I always like tinkering and, and tweaking stuff. But hopefully, this has given you a really good insight into what I'm thinking for um, for 2023, what I'm thinking of doing, what's um, on the horizon. And if there's anything that resonates with you, as in uh, somewhere that you could help, you've done something like this before, you are interested in hearing more, I'm more than happy to have a chat. I love um, sharing ideas, talking about ideas. I love executing on ideas more than anything. Um, so yeah, do feel free to, to reach out and um, yeah, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Bye for now.